Still getting used to that music, but I love I it. Like it. Yeah, Heather likes it. <laughs> Welcome back to Daily Wrap. It's time, obviously, for yay or nay. First up, we know the Mayweather-Pacquiao fight that I mentioned that Governor Pataki thought he was there for that. That's coming up the first Saturday in May at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. is going to be a huge event, albeit five years late. But is it worth eleven thousand dollars to see? Because that's what the average ticket is going for. If you plan on attending and want to go all out and get the prime seats, those only go for $70,000. So panel, first question, all female panel, as JD revealed during the break, she was struggling to name who Mike Tyson was when he fought Holyfield. <laughs> so I have a feeling I know her answer. Actually, let's start with you, Janie. Do you spend 70 grand to see two fighters you've never heard of? No, I wouldn't do it for free. <laughs> I'm, I'm against this sport, and the only time I ever went, oh, no. Mike Tyson bit somebody's ear off, which proved my point. Okay, very good. That's a, that's a hell of a first impression, I guess. <laughs> Lisa? No, I'm the same. I, I hate fights. Any kind of fight. Wow. <laughs> I would not go. Heather? I guess I'm the exception. I, I believe in paying more money for experiences than things, and I think that this would be one heck of an experience, just that the people around and the energy have never been to a fight. I would think I would be upset by it, but I would, if I had that kind of money, I'd do it. Oh, so if you had yeah, right now, liquid I'm not sure. money. She's, a yay. Okay. She's sort of a yay. I'm a yay if I had it, or if someone else wanted to pay for it. I still think if I was like a Gordon Gecko, it would cost me, in essence, 120000 to go, because 70000 is like 120000 before tax. Taxes. Right. All right. So. Oh, yeah, but you're thinking about it too much, Joe. Yeah. Forget you think the so? date. Yeah. He's really thinking. You think yeah. you'd remember? I mean, it's not just that. It's the atmosphere and who's like you were saying. Who's going to be there? The f oh, famous right. people you'll yeah. be hanging out go to, with. Go to go to a party at the Palms around <laughs> midnight that night. Trust me. Oh, there you go. It'll be just just as good. Anyway, a Ukrainian singer is accusing actress Mila Kunis of stealing her pet chicken. 25 years ago. That's when the singer claims the two were friends in first grade, because everybody has great friends in first grade. The singer is suing Kunis for $5,000 for emotional distress. That's right, $5,000. She suffered after her beloved pet chicken was stolen from her. Janie's eye is getting big. Kunis has <laughs> spoken out on the matter of the video, and actor husband Ashton Kutcher made together. Kunis denies knowing the singer and denies stealing the chicken. She says uh, that she never even lived in a farm area while she was in Ukraine and even pointed out the fact that 25 years ago, the singer, the one bringing forth the lawsuit, would have been about one month old. Before making up your minds on this ridiculous <laughs> case, everybody, take a look at the singer's new music video. We had to end it there. We could have just ended the show that way. That would have been amazing. So, are you buying this woman's story, Lisa Jandivis? Uh, I don't think so. I think she kind of wants to get her name somehow out there. Why it's not out there with that video, I don't know. It worked, actually, because we're playing it. Right. Brilliant. Exactly. She should have been, give me, give me, give me, give me a chicken. Um, you know, uh -oh. uh, actually, these lawsuits are very common in Hollywood. I used to work at Celebrity Justice, mm -hmm. and every week I would cover, I, I, there was even a street I called Bitter Screenwriters Row because they were always suing. So they, th there's a lot of suits like this in Hollywood. Please. Mila's, Mila's going to counter sue, I heard, for the pain to her ears that that song did. But listen, <laughs> it's exactly done what she wanted it to do. We're playing it. Now you know about the song. Mm -hmm. Seen the video? Exactly. Mila Kunis is impossibly aesthetically pleasing, oh, therefore I side with her on everything <laughs> and anything. <laughs> Hi, money. Anyway, it goes without saying that Amazon has changed the way we shop, don't I know it, online with one-click ordering and quick deliveries. There's even plans to use drones for said deliveries. But what do you think about direct delivery to your car trunk? This is a true story. Amazon has come up with a unique way to deliver packages off in customers' cars' trunks while they're at work or otherwise unavailable for delivery. Recipients, however, need to live in Munich for now, have a certain Audi equipped with special technology, okay, and be Amazon Prime member, like me, in order to qualify. The program is set to launch in May. Amazon deliveries to your trunk, Lisa. Yeah, your name. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm going to say This isn't May. I don't know. It's I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say May. Wouldn't then, couldn't somebody then... People break into your car if they see these drones depositing. How do you get into things. a trunk? I, I don't know. I don't know. How does the how does the drone get into the trunk? Well, uh, no, no, so the, I'm going to say nay. No. Okay. Let me let me re-explain for Lisa. Okay. <laughs> it's special technology. They get a code, okay. and that opens the trunk only. 
and then the code doesn't work again. So the, the driver, driver can't come back and steal yeah. again. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, I would Jenny, like a, my bicycle, a special mm -hmm. drone delivery to my bicycle. Why not? Yeah, I don't sure. own a car. Oh, I'd love boy, to see where they'd God. store the, the package. <laughs> I'd like an Audi, and I'd like things delivered to it all day long. Very I love good. It. I mean, yay, because I love Amazon. <laughs> oh I ordered some sponges a couple days ago. True story. Finally, a small town in Canada is causing quite a stir over its logo. Tisdale, Saskatchewan, the land of rape and honey. What? <laughs> rape and honey. Tisdale is known for its honey production and rapeseed cultivation, but you can see why so many people, especially business owners in town, are slightly upset, so they're looking for a new logo, then rape or honey. Quickly, two seconds. Rape or honey, yay oh or nay? Oh my gosh, nay. How did, they, how did no, <laughs> no one, how was that even put up there? Good question. Lisa, quickly. <laughs> oh, uh, you know what? Uh, there are a lot of dumb people out there, that's all I can say. Right, and I, I was so rushed, I called you Lisa. Change it over. Change it? Yeah. Okay, this is the Daily Wrap. We're not the land of rape and honey. Thank you, <laughs> panel. We appreciate it. I'm Joe Concha saying have a glorious weekend.